Welcome to a new episode of what horrifying creature can I rustle up from the internet to make a video about this week. This time I think I've outdone myself on the horrifying factor and really turned it up to 11. The telescope fish looks like what would happen if someone locked a minion in a nuclear reactor as it had a meltdown. There are two species of telescope fish, and together they make up the entirety of their family Giganturidae. Their genus is simply called Gigantura. They get their name from the Greek gigante, meaning giant. The end of their name, Tura, derives from aura, meaning tail, so their genus name essentially means giant tail, which is fitting, because they are mostly tail, but not quite as much tail as last episode's animal, the king of herrings, as the telescope fish are only about half tail, where the oar fish can be about three quarters tail. Unsurprisingly, their common name telescope fish comes from their strange eyes, but whoever named them was stupid because they have two eyes, so really they should be called the binocular fish, but whatever. I guess that was already taken by Winteria telescopa, which is commonly known as the binocular fish, but it is so stupid because its binomial name literally has telescopa in it, so why on earth isn't that the telescope fish? Telescope fish are deep sea dwellers, but you probably might have guessed that already, because generally things this disturbing evolve deep in the dark oceans, where thankfully we can't see them. However, in my opinion, these fish don't dwell deep enough in the ocean, averaging a depth of around 500 to 3,000 meters, which is not that deep in the grand scheme of things. This puts them in the mesopelagic and bathypelagic zones, but honestly, I want them at the very least in the abyssopelagic zone. However, if they did live in that zone, despite their big eyes, they'd probably starve to death as it's even too dark for them, apparently. They may live in the mesopelagic and bathypelagic zones, but stay within tropical and subtropical latitudes of the world. However, at the depths they usually live at, the water remains fairly cold, which is how they like it. Telescope fish are predators, relying upon their big minion eyes to find prey. They are able to swallow things much larger than themselves owing to their massive jaws, and based upon their teeth, we can guess that they prey upon fish, as the teeth are sharp and needle-like, excellent for catching slippery fish. But first, they have to find their prey, which can be hard in the vast ocean. Luckily, these fish have an excellent hunting method. Their large eyes can make out even the slightest bit of bioluminescence. Though their eyes are good at seeing things in the twilight, they're even better at seeing silhouettes from below. That's why, like the king of herrings, these fish lie vertically in the water column looking upwards. This is so they can easily make out prey against the light above them and not be seen themselves. It's thought that these fish are broadcast spawners, as they are solitary animals in the deep ocean, and so finding a mate is hard enough. The sperm and eggs will float in the water, hopefully meet, and then be fertilised and become larvae. The juvenile stage of these fish is so drastically different from their adults that when the larvae were discovered, they were thought to be a new species of fish altogether. Their eyesight and amazing jaw are certainly their two greatest adaptations, and they couldn't survive without them in such barren conditions. Strangely, these fish do not possess ventral fins like most fish do. The reason for this is unknown, but it could be something to do with their strange and primitive larval form. Despite the drastic change they go through, they don't ever grow ventral fins. However, they can still swim very well without them, owing to their large tails that their scientific name references. These deep sea fish are hard to study, so there isn't much known of predators and population size. However, as they are near the top of the food chain, we can assume that ocean pollution may be affecting them. Due to the inherent dangers of increasing concentrations of toxic chemicals the higher up trophic levels you go, this is called bioaccumulation, which is particularly prevalent in marine animals. Basically, you shouldn't eat them, but why on earth would you want to anyway? Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, we think we deserve it, if you'd like to see more from us.